Hey what's up YouTube, it's me Whiskey Hotel. You're looking at a game of Kill Confirmed on Turbine, but I don't want to spend too long talking about the gameplay, even though it is super beast, because I have a really long topic I want to cover, and that topic is cheating. And I'm not talking about like cheating on your homework or some shit like that. I'm talking about like the big cheating. Like cheating in relationships, like the cheating that gets people fucking murdered and ruins lives and stuff. And to do this, I feel like the first question to answer is why do people cheat? And the answer is pretty simple for guys. I think guys, even though it sounds like a total cop out, like guys are like genetically pre programmed to try and spread their seed. Like it's like. Back in the caveman days when we were getting eaten by jaguars and shit, you had to fuck as many chicks as you could to try and continue the species. And then on the other end, why do women cheat? That answer's a little bit more complicated, because women can cheat for a lot of reasons, but basically what it comes down to is women tend to be genetically pre-programmed to seek out the best mate, like the best partner to create strong offspring and what the way they do that is seeking out an alpha male and I think most people know that they understand the concept of an alpha male but what you may not realize is that like that can be in multiple areas and the importance of those individual areas varies greatly from girl to girl like the three big ones that everyone probably could figure out by themselves is money power and looks like, if you have all three of those, you are in good shape. You're probably not going to have any problem finding girls. Or stealing girls, if that was your thing. Just don't get murdered. But, the ones you may not understand, or like, that also are very important to girls, are intelligence. That's a big one to some. Humor, that is a good thing to have for any girl. If you can make a girl laugh, you can go pretty far. Uh, ambition, like, even just the the prospect of success like you don't have to be successful at that moment but if you aren't striving to do something that is a big turn off for girls and a big one maybe even the most powerful of them all is like social competence like do you offer something in a social setting like do you get along with her friends and or another example like how many times have you known a girl that is dating in your opinion, a total loser. Like, he's an idiot, he doesn't have a job, but he's in a band, and he's really good at the guitar. Well, that is like a social skill that can outweigh anything else. And another example in a different area is, like, stand-up comedians. Like, stand-up comedians, as a group, are not the most attractive, or maybe some could even say are ugly. But the fact that they are so fucking funny allows them to get girls that, like, maybe you could only dream of. And now we've established why cheating can and does occur. Now it's time for a story. So, a while ago, I was at the bars uh, watching a UFC, and the UFC ended at, like, 10 o'clock, and I was thinking about going home. But I decided to go across the street to another bar that I go to, just to see if there's anyone there that I knew, anyone maybe wanted to play a couple games of pool to give me a couple more hours out. I didn't quite feel like going home yet. And I go in there, and there's a girl there that I had kind of known. Like, she was a cocktail waitress at the bar that I had just left. I go there quite a bit as well, so I knew her a little bit. And she runs right up to me, gives me a big hug. Like, I've never hugged her like that before, but she just did it. And then she brings me over to her pool table. She wants to play some pool. Um, I have got serious fuck me eyes coming over here. Stay in formation or old man's coming in right behind me. No! She's like, this is my boyfriend. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, wow, boyfriend. And this is uh, his friend and his friend's girlfriend. And I was like, oh, okay, I better. I was like, I, I was on good behavior. I just want that to be clear. Like, I wasn't trying to move in on his girl or anything. I was just, I just met them, so I was just trying to be friendly, play a couple games of pool, see if I could just have a good night. Well, she was being, like, a little bit forward with me, like, 
she was, uh, like, just showing me more attention than she probably should have been. Like, she was like, oh, I want to be on Johnny's team, or, like, pulling me outside by the jacket, like, to go smoke a cigarette, leaving her boyfriend in the bar while he also smokes, so he would, like, meet us outside, which is not how that's supposed to go. And I was even, like, I could sense that, like, it was too much. So I was actually, like, separating myself from her, just to avoid a situation. Well, it didn't work, because apparently, while he was being semi-friendly to my face, he was, like, total shit-talking me to her when I wasn't within listening distance. And this guy's a fake. And she didn't like that at all. Like, she did not like him being jealous, and they ended up breaking up because of that. And so I asked her out, like, two days later, not really as a date, but just like to hang out. And I took her to trivia with a couple of my friends. We were just talking. It wasn't really, there wasn't really a sexual vibe to it. It was just hanging out. And actually, at the end of the night, I told her that I was friend zoning her. I was like, you know what? You're in the friend zone. Don't worry about it. And, uh, okay. So that's that part of the story. Fast forward a couple weeks from there. It's my company Christmas party. We're at a nice restaurant. Drinks around the house. I still work with my ex-girlfriend. You're entering a world of pain. We'll call her Echo. And like she, you know, me and her are still cool. Like there's no weird thing in between us. But drinks around the house, so everybody's getting really drunk. And a couple hours into it, my drunk mind is going, "Dang, Echo looks hot. We should definitely go for that." Because even though that relationship was entirely pointless the sex was great and so I was like it'd be sweet if I could do that at least one more time so I'm trying to like kind of finagle that trying to be a little subtle because I don't want to overstep my bounds because I have to see this chick every day at work but I don't think I was being like totally secretive I think she could have picked up on that vibe if she wanted it and so the night continues to go on, drinks, 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 and it starts to wrap up. Well, me and her and my friend that also works there and his girlfriend were like the only people there that are under the age of 25. So we are not going to be done at 10 o'clock. Like, we're going to keep going out. So me and Echo, my buddy and his girl, all decide to go to the bars. And so we go to the bars. I'm still trying to see if this is going to happen. I'm like, maybe it might. So we go to the bars, well, we're just kind of hanging out, having fun, like, we met a couple other people there. Well, the other girl, we'll call her Charlie, comes up to me with a shot of whiskey. And I was like, oh, hey, what's up? And, like, because I was surrounded by girls, like, she kind of went into, like, I'm going to stake my claim mode. Like, she was putting her face really close to mine, she was rubbing up on me. Like, she was letting me pull her close, because I'm drunk, so I'm just... Whatever. And it was like, oh shit, I might have a new thing here. And then she buys another shot of whiskey, and this time she toasts me. The toast she did, she was like, your place or mine? Clink. Ooh, that's a bingo. And I was like, oh, here we go. Like, this is going to happen, this is great. A little bit of a bonus revenge. All happening in front of my ex-girlfriend's eyes. Pick it, taking home a girl from the bars right in front of her. That was pretty sweet. Kind of mean, but I didn't care. Because she was going to go meet her boyfriend later. I don't know if I mentioned that. She had a boyfriend, but he wasn't serious. And so I take her home. We have a nice, fun, naked time. Is that a call for sex? And then I wake up in the morning at like 8 a.m. to her calling a cab and I was like what's going on do you have to work or something and she's like no I have to go meet my boyfriend it's our one year anniversary he's taking me out to brunch now we are fucked and I was like oh really like I thought you broke up with him she's like yeah I did we got back together and I was like, whoa, okay. Well, you didn't mention him. Like, sorry, I guess I'll see you later. Haven't talked to her since. 
And originally I like thought I should feel bad, but like, she didn't mention him. I didn't know that. Like how, she wasn't acting like she had a boyfriend. So it's really not my fault, and that's how I justified it. But then I think about the first part of that night. I was also trying to fuck a girl with a boyfriend. Like, and I guess it all really whittles down to my original stance, is that cheating doesn't happen in a happy relationship. So I don't feel like I should feel bad if I hook up with a girl, because it was probably going to happen anyway. It just so happened with me. So if it's going to happen anyway, I might as well get some action. But I guess my point I'm really getting at is that if cheating happens, it should be like the ultimate kibosh. Because there's no single sign that's greater that shows that you're in an unhappy relationship, or at least one person is in an unhappy relationship. And you should probably just move on. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll get cheated on. And my perspective will change. But for now, if you're a dick, I will probably have sex with your girlfriend. Sorry. Thanks for watching my video. I'll see you next time. Later, dudes.